In this video, we're going to look at some Pythagorean theorem word problems. Now, some students do have trouble with word problems in general, get confused about reading through the context, but the nice thing about Pythagorean theorem word problems is they generally allow me to avoid what made Pythagorean theorem problems trickier in some of the previous videos. So, as a little reminder, the Pythagorean theorem told us that if I have a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, I know that A squared plus B squared must equal C squared. And we did a bunch of work with that. What ended up making this a little bit tricky in the previous videos is perhaps I came up to an answer, or almost an answer, where I got x squared is 24. And I showed, okay, we can take the square root of both sides, and if I wanted the exact answer, I can either realize that 24 is 4 times 6, which means I get straight to 2 root 6, or I end up having to factor this down, so 24 breaks down as 4 times 6, 4 breaks down into 2 times 2, those are both prime. 6 breaks down to 2 times 3, those are both prime. And I see that 2 times 2, or 2 and 2 are pairs, so they come out. The 2 and 3 here don't pair off with any other numbers, so they are stuck in there. 2 times 3 gives me 6. And that was a bit of a pain. But here's the thing. Word problems are trying to look like what we would do in the real world. And if I went to the hardware store and went up to an associate, a salesperson, whatever, and said, hey, I need two root six feet of rope, they wouldn't know what to do with me. And if I just kept on repeating, getting louder and louder about needing two root six feet of rope, they'd probably kick me out of the store. However, if I did what sort of mathematically and computationally much easier. If I just took the square root of 24 and got a decimal and went to that hardware store and said, okay, 4.899. Let's just say that I asked for 4.899 feet of rope. They'd know exactly what I wanted. They'd probably give me five feet of rope. They might, they probably wouldn't cut off an inch or two at the end there. But in the real world, even though as a math teacher, I don't generally like this answer as much because I've lost information when I round things off. Um, this is by far the more useful answer. So we're just going to go straight to the decimal approximation um, when I am doing these problems. So let's see what a problem looks like. Example one, you wake up to realize that you are a prince in the woods and need to get a princess out of a tower. Since you aren't some type of monster, you decide to climb a ladder. I mean, what type of monster would try to climb a poor girl's hair? Um, you brought a 25-foot ladder, and you place the base of the ladder five feet from the base of the tower. How high up the tower can you reach? And so there's a lot going on here. I mean, you know you have a tower There's probably a window over here with some girl in there that you don't want to climb her hair. You're standing over here. You're apparently a stick person. You're, I don't know, carrying a 25-foot ladder through the woods as you tend to do when you're going for walks in the woods, just in case you happen upon a tower. But we need to figure out how to answer this question. So some comments, then we'll get back to this question. When I'm trying to solve right triangle word problems, or pretty much any word problems. Um, read and understand the problem completely. Don't glance at it, look for numbers, and hope for the best. Understand what's going on. What do we have, and what would make sense? And then when you think you've made sense of it, look it over again. Make sure you've put things to the right um, sides. We'll see that, okay? Draw an appropriate diagram. So for the right triangle word problems, an appropriate diagram can be very useful. Now, if you get really good at these, you can oftentimes skip over the diagram and go straight to the computation. But 
if you want to make sure that's set up correctly, if you're not sure it's set up correctly, or if you need to explain something to someone that doesn't fully get it, the diagram can be very important. And then solve for the desired value. Make sure you found what they've asked for. I've kept things for um, these problems relatively direct. I'm asking for pretty much one value. But I could ask for some more. Now I'll talk about those in a few of the example problems here. Um, so make sure you've answered the question that was asked at the end. Okay, so let's go back to this. And now, same problem. You're a prince. Uh, you brought a 25-foot ladder. You have a tower. But now I've included a diagram. For every problem I'm giving you right now, I will include the diagram. You should be able to figure it out on your own, but um, just for the purposes of starting this off, I'll include the diagram. Most often in these types of problems, a diagram just like this one will work out. So what we have here, okay, let me get a nice gray for a tower. We have a tower right here. So we have the window of the tower. Hopefully the window is right here so your ladder reaches. We have, you know, nice little castellation, crenellation at the top. Okay, you know, nice stone tower. Okay. We have you. We're, we will make you green because, sure, why not? Okay, and now think this through. The tower's here. Where would the ladder be? The ladder's not going to be right here. The ladder's leaning against the wall. So my ladder is going to be right here. And as long as I fully understand what happened here, I can put things into this diagram appropriately and come up with an answer. So let's see. We brought a 25-foot ladder. Well, the ladder's right here, so the 25 should be right here, 25 feet. Okay, the hypotenuse. I placed the base of the ladder five feet from the base of the tower, so I need to lean it up against the tower. If I put the base right here, the ladder could fall backwards and we'd be not much of a prince anymore. So I'll put the five feet down here. I want to know how high up the tower I can reach, so I'll put the X right here, because that's how high up the tower I'm going. And once I figure that out, it's the same as before. Now, I will be a little bit loose with the units to start off. So I go across here, and I know that this is my hypotenuse. I'm just going to put, for most of the time I do the work, the 25 as C, not the 25 feet. I'll show that. I'll show with the units in this example, but I can avoid using the units. Now, A and B will be these, so I'd have X. I'd have 5 as a and b, and so I have x squared and 5 squared. And now I'll just go through and solve this off. So bring down the x squared. 5 squared is 25. 25 squared, if you don't know, I can go to the calculator and just do 25 times 25. I should get 625 from there. There we go. Now, I'm going to try to solve for x squared by subtracting 25 from both sides. I will get x squared equals 600. And then I'll take the square root of both sides. And for this case, I'm just going to go to the calculator and just going to find the square root. I'm not going to bother getting an exact answer because 24.495 24.495 is good enough. Now, this is a real world problem. I should include feet in my answer. I'm not going up 24 inches, I'm going up 24 feet. So ideally, if this princess's window is less than 24 and a half feet up, I should be able to reach it safely with my ladder. Okay, um, I'm gonna show this with the units. Again, it's not necessary, but just so you can see how this feet ends up in the answer. So if I included the units, I would have x squared plus 5 feet squared equals 25 feet squared. 
bring down the x squared, 5 feet all squared would be 25 square feet. 25 feet all squared would be 625 square feet. I would subtract the 25 from both sides, just like I did here, and get x squared equals, since they're both in feet squared, I can combine them, so 600 square feet. And then, when I take the square root, not only does the square root of 600 get me this number, but the square root of feet squared gives me the feet. So it works out. I'm not going to show this on any more of the examples because it usually tends to confuse the matter, not make it simpler. But don't forget, since this is a real world problem, I'm going to want some type of units in my answer, unless the problem states otherwise. Okay, let's see two more examples. And um, there's a worksheet attached below, so you can try some of these on your own. I will also have a video of four more work examples, so you can just see how to take these from a sentence or two into a diagram into a final answer. Okay, second problem. So thankfully, you wake up from your princely dream to realize that you're actually a television salesperson. You know that televisions are described by the length of, di of their diagonal. You, unfortunately, forgot what size television you are selling. You measure the screen and see that it is 48 inches wide and 27 inches tall. What size television are you selling? So, um, in here, let's look at this. Now, if you didn't know, now you know that the televisions, when they say like a 55-inch or 60-inch television, they actually measure this diagonal length right here. And that's the longest length on a television screen. So it gives me the biggest number, which people like big numbers for screens. I don't know. Um, but I only know in this problem how wide and how tall. So I'll put that down there. I know that's 48 inches wide. I know it's 27 inches tall. Now, um, I don't know why in this problem you didn't just measure the diagonal and get the answer, but apparently you didn't. But notice, when I have a rectangle, if I have the diagonal, it just cuts it into two right triangles. And for this, I want to find the diagonal length. That's this x right here. So I'll just do Pythagorean theorem and notice I first find c. So I go across the right angle, c will be x. So I'll have an x squared by itself. And a and b doesn't matter, so I'll put 27 squared plus 48 squared. I'll go to the calculator to figure out what 27 squared is. That's 729. And also figure out what 48 squared is. That is 2,304. I'll add these two numbers together. Get 3,033. And then, to solve, I'll take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 3,033 is 55.073. So x equals 55. 0 0.073 inches. Now I'll leave this as my answer. However, in the real world, and maybe I'd even say it's a 55 inch television. You actually sell this length. You go to the store, you can see a 55 inch television. Okay, one more example. You finally wake up from your TV selling nightmare, because who wants to be a TV salesman, to realize you're actually Florence Griffith Joyner the women's 200 meter world record holder. Okay, you're a running world record holder, that's wonderful. In order to give one of your friends an advantage, you let him run the diagonal of the football field while you run along the end zone and the sideline. So, you know, you got some boy who thinks he's fast, but you, you gotta show him what's up. So you say, okay, okay, you run along here, I'll run this distance, we'll see who gets there first, because you're probably gonna beat him anyway. So, um, let's figure out how long 
your friend needs to run. So we, we basically do the same thing. We have a rectangle, but if I have the diagonal of a rectangle, it really splits me into two right triangles. So we're going to consider this right triangle. Now, in this right triangle, we have a football field. And these are the actual dimensions of American football, for those that might not be in the United States. Um, the dimensions, this is 160 feet wide and 360 feet long. I am including the end zones in there. Of course, it's 300 feet if you go um, from the goal line to goal line. Okay, and so I just do a little bit of um, work here. I want to find the diagonal, put an X here, and I just do Pythagorean theorem. So across the right angle, that's going to be my C value. I put X squared by itself. A and B, so I'll have 160 squared plus 360 squared. Jumped my calculator because I don't feel like, I mean, I could do 25600, sure, but let's just, let's just do it in here, make our life easier. So 160 squared is 25,600. 360 squared is 129,600. Okay, add these two together. So 129,600 plus 25,600 will give me 155,200. And to finish it off, we'll take a little square root. And I get about 393.954. 393 point, I think it was 954. Yes, it was. And notice I do include the feet here at the end. Now, this is what the question asked for. I did say that sometimes they could ask for more. So perhaps what might be more useful to you is knowing how much further you're running and still beating your friend. So um, if I want to do that, I say, okay, this was 393.954. The distance you're running will be 160 plus 360, which gives me, let's see, for 520 feet. And then I could subtract these. So 520 minus 393.954. And that would give me 123.046. So 123.046 more feet um, for you. Now, that's not the question this is asking, but I could have a problem that does ask this question. So just keep in mind that I could have more. All right, don't forget, there's a link to the, vid to the worksheet down below. And if you want to see a few more examples worked out, there's a link to a video um, with more work examples down below as well.